Okay, this is History 114, uh, Module 2, Lecture Video 7, Professor Diffley. Uh, we're talking about, um, you know, some overview of Native American groups that prior to contact. Um, talk about religion, land, and property. I'm going to go over this a little bit here. Land and property stuff uh, we'll talk about, but that, that especially, um, uh, we're going to go back over it in the next module, especially. Harrison. Uh, Native American religion, they were uh, animism is what it was. Animism. Very important. This is not based on animal worship, although it almost seems like that's what it is. Anani animism is the belief that everything in the world is imbued with some sort of like spirit there, um, right? You don't worship the animal, but everything has a spirit. Everything's connected. Uh, that sort of thing. So that's what it was. They, they believe that the spirit, yeah. Many modern religions, the here and now and the afterlife, the spiritual world, like, you know, a heaven or hell or whatever uh, you believe in, uh, those things, they're separate, right? To animists, um, and this is, you know, you found this in the uh, all across Asia, Europe, everywhere. This has been a, you know, early peoples all had these views. Everything was imbued with a spirit, right? Or something like that. And the spirit world uh, and the uh, human world were much closer, right? And so um, they could be uh, contacted. They could, you know, they play, they, they really work together, or impact each other. That's what animism, an animism uh, generally means um, there. Um, they did have what we would call shamans and medicine men. Shamans were especially important, and you find them everywhere you go with uh, animism, is the idea that certain people had a, um, a better connection to that spirit world and could, um, you know, interpret or speak to it, um, that you'll find them everywhere. The ancient Greeks had oracles and things like that. You were supposed to be able to tell that, um, and others. So there's some there. Medicine men, um, you know, it's, uh, again, they're not doctors, but they were people who knew, uh, you know, herbal remedies. Um, later they'll be, you know, you, you'll find those everywhere too. Um, again, some of these terms, shaman and medicine men have taken on, uh, negative connotations. Um, you know, they've often shaman, medicine man, uh, next word people comes out of people's mouths is witch doctor, right? And that's from the European perspective, right? That it's it's different than the science or, or the medicine they knew, that sort of thing. But you didn't have specialized people like that uh, in the groups. Um, they did, though, and this is true, just, just uh, virtually, uh, really pretty much every Native Americans uh, there were, is they did believe in a single creator deity. Um, so there might be other um, spirits out there, but they did believe that one deity created uh, uh, the world. And now in all the groups, it is something different, right? It really could in uh, some of the uh, uh, group, you know, it, was, it, it could be an animal deity, but they all did believe there was one single creator. So that is something they had in common with the Europeans, even though it wasn't the same sort of deity uh, as they're talking about that they did talk about a creator like you know just like the europeans would say that uh, the god the creator that's what they would talk about as well uh land and property uh people didn't uh you know own land the way the europeans do what we do today it's a common resource it's not a commodity a commodity is something to be bought and sold for a profit um you had the right to own the land to possess the land and use it right the land would belong to the the people the you know the nation the tribe and you know, everybody would be given uh you know, land as they needed it. You know, that sort of thing. Um, that's something that we'll see when the Europeans uh, meet the Native Americans is astounded. A uh, whole across all the uh, records say is that they never found any homeless or, uh, you know, truly poor people, you know, beggars or things like that. Why? Because everyone seemed to be taken care of. But again, uh, to the commodity thing, there's no real estate market like there is today. Um, no real uh, focus on accumulating wealth or material goods. Um, you know, again, like I said, people would have jewelry and stuff like that, but not hoard it, right? And a lot of times say that if there was a chief, uh, who's usually looked at as most respective uh, member, chiefs weren't as like, you know, true political leaders, I say, or like a king where their, uh, you know, their word goes. Um, they were usually persuaders, right? They were well respected um, that their word carried such weight that people would often follow them, um, you know, in some... Uh, they weren't, you know, they, they weren't like the uh, dictatorial in that sense. And we've seen that in all, wherever you find uh, groups like that, you'll find that um, all around the world. Uh, but there was also, you know, if anybody did the, uh, have wealth, um, it was usually get, gave, uh, used for gifting, right? To uh, create uh, bonds between groups, uh, to reward uh, members, right? It was very much, uh, you know, when Native American, you would give and take, right? It was it, this is almost like symbiotic relationships in, in one way. Again, there are going to be existence of status differences, but not like we have um, today or not even that existed in Europe at the time of first contact, right? You would, like I said, there was no paupers, there's no uh, beggars, no homeless, uh, things like that. Some people would be more valued. So, you know, maybe chiefs came from a certain family because they were great warriors, great leaders in one that. So that would be respected. 
but often um, a status difference was based on merit, right? It's what people did. What did they provide? One was a, you're a better hunter. Someone else was a better farmer. So of course they're going to be uh, a, a better status, right? The shaman um, who has a connection to the spirit world is going to be looked up to uh, that sort of thing. The healer is going to be looked up to. I mean, that's just the way it goes today, but no major, like the gap, you know, is not going to have, at least in this region, you go to the Aztecs, you are going to have extremely rich, um, you know, kings and then lesser, but not in the region we're talking about in North America, uh, Northeast. You're not going to have that up here. Um, there's not going to be those great uh, rifts and uh, gaps between wealth. <laughs> and this is one, and again, I'll tell you this, but, you know, you can see the difference of, uh, you know, how all these um, uh, land is connected over here, the Native Americans, and then the European one broken into plots that are sold and things like that. It's very different. Uh, uh, you know, this is an early map uh, from Virginia. Shows this, um, you know, again, like I told you, they saw them as uh, savages, inferior bar barbarians. Um, we actually come back to this, but just know, right, the view of the Native Americans was not a positive, even when they called them noble savages. It's two things to say someone is noble is a good thing, right? They are to be looked up to, but the same word, the next word after it is a savage, right? So they're noble in a sense, but they're also savages, right? They they respected the, them to a degree, but not always, but they were mostly looked at as inferior barbarians. Why they lacked the uh, you know the same God they lacked uh, you know they seemingly lacked government they seemingly lacked the structures that Europeans knew. Um, here's a depiction of Native Americans um, of religious practices done by Europeans. You see what's coming out of the wigwam hut here is a devil, right? So what are they saying them that yeah they have religion but it's the wrong religion. They're um, devil worshippers and things like that. But we will get back into that more. I just wanted to touch on that there. Um, you know, here's another depiction of Native American life, right? This is one, uh, you know, John White in 1585, uh, done in, uh, you know, t down towards Virginia. Uh, this this idea was, you know, uh, it shows the abundance of the Americas. There's lots going on here, right? The look at the fish everywhere. Um, and that, but it is also to a degree, uh, you know, it shows some of their sophistication, right? They have um, traps for them. They, you know, they know how to fence them in, that sort of thing. Um, but it also, you know, doesn't really show us much beyond that. What we're supposed to take from here is the abundance in the Americas. And these images were used to then recruit people to come to the Americas. That sort of thing. Uh, again, this is that Jesuit portrayal of American Indian religion um, here. These were French uh, Jesuits. And so this is up in uh, actually our region is uh, what we're talking about. So it almost looks like wigwams uh, and uh, longhouses. Um, yeah, gender and work, it was definitely different. Uh, Indian men and women uh, would tend to see the men are doing more of the uh, plowing, you know, the hoeing of the fields and that. Um, but there is going to be differences. Um, you know, Indian freedom, you know, it's group autonomy, right? The group uh, kinship ties, mutual obligations. Remember I said that's symbiotic. Um, and you could have individual and personal freedom. <laughs> it was important, uh, but, you know, being part of the group was more where the Europeans are going to focus more on individualistic. But again, we'll, we'll, we'll look more at depth in that in the next Again, native gender relations different. Again, they're matrilineal. Uh, you had clan matrons rather than a, uh, uh, you know, the head of the family and the, the clan being a male. Um, when women tended to agriculture, um, mostly they were most responsible for the fields um, and uh, men hunted. Um, and, you know, this, you know, because their status was based on hunting and warfare, right? Hunting is almost practiced for warfare. It's also bringing in food. Uh, but women, you know, for the Europeans, this was viewed as negative that, you know, the, it, Native American men were cruel to their women because they made them uh, be farmers and, and work in agriculture, and they just spent their time hunting, right? Because um, for many Europeans, at least the elite, hunting back then was not something you did for survival. It was something you did for sport, right? So again, we'll get into that. But you can see already it's going to be great differences, right, between the two sides and you know, how different Native American life uh, seemed there. So. Uh, the Native Americans in the Connecticut River Valley, uh, 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 the uh, Woba, Woba Nakiak, um is the groups here is what we're talking about. So we're going to focus in here. But so what we're talking about is a uh, this group in here, even going up to here, um, sharing a uh, a very similar, uh, uh, what do I put, uh, you know, culture. They, they all consider themselves part of a larger a nation, but they're going to be broken off into different groups. But uh, uh, Natakina is a, a Wobanak, uh homeland here. And this is the area, as you can see them uh, in red, um, native place names, uh, their villages, um, and things like that. And so this is, you know, uh, something that was created. Uh, obviously, the, the information for this was created around 1704. This was made uh, new, uh, obviously. But yeah, so become talk, non non talk, Agawam, Wanarko. Um, you can see where Springfield is right in here. All right, so. 
Uh, what does the name mean? The Dawnland people are the people of the East, right? So that's what they call themselves. It's probably what people called them as well. That's often where names come from. Um, they are sometimes called as the Abenaki or the Wobanaki. Um, it's a broad term, right? It includes numerous groups that shared a general culture, including those of the Middle uh, you know, Valley, right? So they share a culture, but again, they could see themselves as part of different groups. Um, <laughs> what do we mean by culture? They probably had the same um, uh, religious um, beliefs, like they had shared the same stories of creation, things like that, um, but they could still see themselves um, uh, separate, separate parts of that, right? So it'd be almost like this would be a large, you know, area, and each part would almost be like its own little uh, country or, or neighboring thing, like that. In that sense, um, they spoke Algonquin language. They are part of the larger Eastern Algonquin uh, language family, and the Algonquin goes up into here uh, and over into uh, New York over there. Um, so, but one of the things we're going to say, you're going to have Narragansett, Pawtucket, uh, and other groups down here. Um, you're going to have the Iroquois, Huron, up here. This region was a area that it was often fought over. It's an area that people went through a lot, um, you know, and it's fought over for its resources. That's why, you know, Europeans eventually going to end up over here too. So that's going to have a big impact on these groups here. And Natakina is, again, the uh, homeland here. Um, so where in the Connecticut River Valley uh, are we here? And so what are the groups here? This is what you got here. So you got the uh, Sokokai uh, all the way up uh, towards uh, Vermont. You got the Pukumtuk up by Deerfield, the Nanotuk. Uh, are down by uh, what would be today's Northampton, the Aguam uh, natives, uh, which is around uh, what is today uh, Aguam and Springfield, uh, Massachusetts. Uh, that's the uh, groups there. And then the Waranoco uh, out towards Westfield and things like that. But again, they all shared uh, uh, similarity cultures, but they all didn't always get along, right? They would, uh, uh, you know, uh, ally with other groups at different times. Um, but yeah, they were separate and distinct, right? That's why they have these different names there. So moving on here, um, yeah, so this will show you a little bit more, right, of how they could be um, a little different. So this is Pocumtuck territory here, right? That's, uh, this is around there on the Connecticut River Valley, Westfield River, Chicopee River over in here, Ware River um, there. So you're going to have the Abenaki up there. You're going to have the Mohican, uh, uh, Mohicans over here, the Nipmuc, um, and the Wampanoag and others. So this is all, right? Again, these are all separate groups um, and they are going to uh, fight uh, a lot over time. Um, and it's gonna really influence uh, what happens. And especially later, we'll see this later, how they associate and ally with the Europeans, especially. But this is the, give you an idea of the cultural uh, uh, groups uh, that lived here, Native Americans at the time, of, uh, you know, right before European conflict. So moving on a little bit here. Um, so this is uh, also the, uh, from one of the, that website, uh, the book I gave you. Um, it, it's a it's an online book that's in the uh, course content section there. Uh, again, native se settlements around 1600, 1650. Again, you can see them up and down the river, the Pecumtuck, the Nanotuck, Waranoke, uh, and uh, Aguam over here. Right? So you can see the difference. This one actually has them up a little higher than most of down here because uh, the Podunk and that uh, will uh, at times uh, cross over but uh, you, know, you can see what they're called, the river tribes here, right? Is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, why? Because they're all based around these rivers over here, right? You got the Wampanoag, and uh, like I said, the Narragansett and others, Pequot, Mohegan, um, all of them, all these different uh, groups around here. So it gives you a little bit more idea. Um, and again, you could use this uh, going forward as a you know, basis of, of more. Um, some of the groups here, Algonquin, Waranoco, uh, or the Waranoke is a place name of that in case of river and land that are turning about. Um, this is uh, what is Westfield, Massachusetts, right? Closely allied with the Aguam and that. Um, very uh, cultural uh, and uh, linked to the Algonquin. They are very allied with the Aguam, Nanatuck, Kumtuck. They're probably um, family, part of larger clan family, kinship families there, right? But yeah, this makes sense. It's about where the river turns around. Um, that's where often their place names were and that. So that's the uh, Waranoko. Um, again, there's note stuff that uh, you read about this in the uh, required reading. Now talk uh, the midpoint of the river. Northampton is where it was, right? And that's pretty good uh, to them. That's where the midpoint of the river was. Um, present day Amherst, Hadley, Hatfield, Northampton, um, right? Um, they are, again, Algonquin. Uh, they're more allied with the Pocumtuck. So you can start to see as you move for uh, north, right? There's going to be different, uh, right? The Aguam, uh, that Waranoko are, you know, allied with them. But then as you go up here, Nanotuck are allied with the people to the north, right? So you can see the differences already between the groups. 
uh, Pocomtuck. Again, the swift, shallow uh, Sandy River uh, here is uh, a name for it too. And that is what the river is like over in uh, in this area over there uh, by uh, Mount Sugarloaf. Um, and, you know, this is uh, now the no name for the river now known as Deerfield River and uh, up in Deerfield and all that. Um, you know, they are known as the Pocomtuck includes Deerfield, all that. Uh, again, <laughs> and these are the stories, uh, the origin story. So this is just a little overview thing there. Um, again, this uh, shows earlier um and now here's uh we'll pick up in the uh, next video uh eight for uh the agua move forward